Welcome to our audience. On behalf of the Symposium on Cultural Diplomacy in Germany, we'd like to interview Dr. Ogden Hischer, who has just been, who has just finished his lecture, lecture upstairs. So first of all, thank you very much for joining us today at the Symposium. And thank you, thank you for the lecture and the panel discussion. We hope it has been productive for you as well. And now we'd simply like to ask you four more questions and I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on current topics. So following your lecture and concerning the fact that we are the ICD, Institute for Cultural Diplomacy, what does cultural diplomacy mean for you personally? Well, I mentioned it already. Um, to me, I'm a layman. To me, culture is not just, um, you know, uh, the grand culture. Of course, when it comes to Germany, everyone is aware of uh, literature, of philosophy, of music, of uh, whatever, uh, you know, important um, uh, person and personalities, Beethoven, Mo uh, uh, Goethe, uh, Hegel, Kant, uh, Marx. Uh, but uh, it, this, this is just one part uh, of, of the whole thing. There is another part as well. Uh, and this other part is about what a country is conveying uh, to the rest of the world. I, I gave a specific example. Uh, back then, uh, when I was young, um, I was perceiving, and uh, alongside my country men at that time, I was perceiving Germany as a cultured nation, and cultured nation simply means uh, this is a, a advanced, civilized society. Uh, they behave well, they are well mannered, and they are polite, and uh, they are educated, and uh, all those things that make a, a, a nation, a foreign nation, attractive. Um, and also, um, this is uh, part of the story, if, even if not the, the central part. Um, today, because we are very much materially, you know, interested and oriented, people ask themselves, themselves, what is that specific country offering to the rest of the world in terms of material things or of goods and items? And again. From a historical point of view, I was stressing the situation back then in the 60s and 70s. In the former Eastern, Eastern Bloc, there were a lot of scarcities on many fronts. But what people knew in Germany, uh, they produce good uh, you know, items and goods, and they are of uh, decent quality, and we like it. And when we compare their goods to the goods produced in our own country or somewhere else, we would prefer their goods. And why are they good? Because they are the output of a country which is advanced in, in many respects, but this cultural respect is central. You've also spent a considerable amount of time as a re researcher and lecturer in Germany. What have you observed are the main cultural bridges that Germany has built? Oh, Germany is a cultural hub, um, and especially because um, you know my uh, personal development is very much uh, linked to what used to be the former Eastern Bloc. I w very well know that uh, uh, Germany at that time, or East Germany at that time, was uh, highly respected in, in, in cultural terms and. Uh, uh, people were uh, uh, aware of the, you know, achievements of, of that nation um, on the cultural front, um, and they were trying to, more or less successfully or not, to emulate uh, that. Uh, so uh, there is uh, no doubt um, uh, Germany was uh, recognized and respected as a advanced uh, nation and uh, in cultural respect uh, as well. Now, you've been working on several relevant research areas such as economic policy with a special emphasis on growth, innovation and monetary aspects. What have you observed about the consequences of globalization on growth and employment in the European Union? Oh, this is very much a uh, question related to economics. Yeah, I feel somewhat better. Um, well, uh, in a nutshell, um, globalization is a good thing in general, but uh, of course we have to consider there are always, um, as very often actually, always uh, winners and losers. Uh, in terms of growth, um, well, if you um, compare uh, the rates of growth of uh, European economies, uh, 
say, back in the 60s and 70s to what uh, was later on when uh, the globalization process started, uh, they went down. And when, when you consider um, the rate of unemployment, uh, the rates of unemployment by, by country uh, prior to globalization and uh, afterwards, um, the outcome is um, uh, not, uh, not encouraging as well. So in that respect, it's hard to say um, Europe is uh, clearly on, on, on the uh, upside in terms of uh, globalization. There is a lot of work to do uh, to take advantage of the opportunities uh, globalization is uh, offering. Uh, we we'll just uh, ask our last question. How can a metropolis such as Berlin benefit from its multiculturalism? Good question. Uh, I can only, um, you know, um, share with you my personal observations. Um, when you are, when you are downtown, and um, you, you, you know, you go around and walk uh, uh, around the city center, you you you, you will be uh, surprised and stunned. Uh, how few German you are going to hear. You are going to hear, uh, you know, myriads of um, foreign languages you, you understand or you don't understand. Um, so you can say, but those people, they are all tourists. Uh, I'm not sure. There are many uh, people in, in Berlin living here, speaking their own uh, languages. And uh, I, I've been told uh, we, we do have right now 189 uh, different uh, na uh, nations or representative or citizens of uh, so many different nations, but they still are here. They they get along, all of them, uh, in spite of their different uh, cultural backgrounds, and uh, everything is everything has been so far fine. I hope very much is going to to be fine in the future as well. But uh, obviously Berlin is an internationally recognized city and it's very much coveted and uh, demanded. That's why people are coming here and this is the good news. Thank you very much. We have come now to the end of our interview. So thank you for your time and hopefully we're going to see you again in the ICD. Thank you.